Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Today, this is part two of my 3D printed arc reactor project. So here's the arc reactor model that I did. I designed this in 123D design from Autodesk, which is free software you can download for absolutely nothing. I did a tutorial in the last part about how I created all these pieces. Uh, but basically there are several pieces here which are gonna be 3D printed. Uh, this piece floating off to the right hand side fits in uh, each one of these indented parts here so they can align properly and that's where the wire gets wrapped around and uh, there are various other pieces that all fit onto a chassis and the design has been optimised for 3D printing so it's not movie accurate uh, but most of the pieces are there and it's characteristic of the arc reactor from the first movie um, so various clear parts, so we can have an LED in the base, and uh, you know various parts that are printed separately, and those get added on. So uh, we're going to print all the parts in different colour plastic, including the clear for the clear parts. If you want to see more pictures of this, and eventually I will make the STL files available for download, you can go to my website. The link is in the description for this video. So the 3D printer I'm using is a Lulzbot AO101 printer. Um, this was pre-assembled from Lulzbot, so it came shipped all ready to go. Um, unfortunately they don't make that model anymore, but basically it's based on a Mendelmax design, so there's various other 3D printers you could buy. I've got various plastics to print in, and the clear parts I'm printing in clear PLA. So they won't be completely clear by the time it's printed, but they'll be pretty good. I also have three rolls of ABS here, black, silver and gold, so I'll be uh, printing the parts straight in those colours so I don't have to paint them or colour them afterwards. So here are all my 3D printed parts. There's the uh, chassis, the main base part. The gold and the black ring for the top. Various saddles and the diffuser which fits just in there. And I've got two rings here. One I printed solid and one I printed with the holes in the bottom and a channel for the LEDs. So that fits on there quite nicely. All the pieces appear to fit together. And I should also have the two black rings which fit onto the base part. So um, in terms of lighting, I've obviously left a space in there to put an LED cluster of some sort. I've actually settled on these ones, which are three volt LEDs. They're one watt LEDs, they run off a couple of triple A's. Um, those are extremely bright, too bright to look straight at. And uh, that diffuses quite well into there. Um, I'm kind of glad I did this design with the LED holes in there because it doesn't really light up the outside ring at all. Um, so I've got a load of white LEDs to install in that ring. So before I put the other parts on, I'm going to work on fitting that LED actually inside and running the wires out. And I'm also going to drill a couple of holes in each side so I can run a wire up each side which is going to go up to the ring of LEDs in the top. Now before I put this LED in here, I've made a couple of holes in the sides already. Um, I need to put on one of the rings so the wires go below. So one of these rings has got a slight taper on the inside which goes higher up. And one of these rings is flat, so I'm just going to 
fit that on all the way around. All of the 3D printed parts have slight ridges on, so most of the pieces snap together now. So there we are, we've got the LED mounted, we've got wires coming out um, to run up to the ring, which I've used some copper wire, it's actually covered with insulation that you have to burn off with a soldering iron so it won't cause any shorts, and it looks sort of characteristic of the arc reactor. So there's that, and if we pop this diffuser on, that works quite well. So now let's put the other pieces on. Right, let's add the other parts. So I've got this uh, ring that goes in here, so that should snap on all the way round and it fits into a specific place um, where there's um, a, piece, uh, a piece in the chassis that that fits exactly into so we should be able to just push all those in a little bit and snap it on all the way round there we go and then we can add the gold piece which just fits in there. And then finally the black piece that fits on top. So most of these pieces snap together quite well. I probably will put some glue in. Let's just turn that LED on again. So looking good so far. So here's the main ring with the holes in and I've got these grey saddles as well. So they fit onto each segment as I described in the CAD video, the previous video. They should all eventually click into place. There we go. So there's 10 of those. Quite a tight fit. Um, obviously that's where the wire gets wrapped around, so each one will have copper wire wrapped around all the way around the bottom and below each one is an LED, so I need to fit all these LEDs in all the way around. Um, now I've positioned the LEDs so they're directly below the saddles, so when we look at it from the top we won't just get a bright spot in each section, it should hopefully diffuse along the plastic from behind these. That's the plan anyway, so um, let me get all those saddles on and we'll stick all the LEDs in and then start soldering them together in one big ring. So all my saddles are installed and I've put the LEDs behind. Now what I'm doing is bending the wires down to meet the next one and soldering them round in a ring. And we've got all the shorter legs which are negative in the middle. So we should be able to just put a dab of solder on each one. And continue all the way around. All my LEDs have been soldered and I've just temporarily attached these wires for testing so we can see that lights up quite well and just turn off this big light and um, that seems to be seems to do the job quite well so now we need to uh, wrap some copper wire around each of those and we'll see um, how that goes so I'm guessing there with wrapping the wire around. I'm using this wire I bought on eBay for doing jewellery making and stuff. It's copper wire, but it's um, either plastic or enamel coated, which means it doesn't short out the LEDs and the whole thing still works, even though this wire is touching the LED leads. So I've just got three more to do. I found I need 60 to 70 centimeter long piece of wire to wrap around each one of these a number of times. Obviously, if it was thicker wire, I would need less. So there's my uh, main coil, fully wound. Um, I'm starting to put these links on here, which are soldered between the corners, and they have to be uh, one from each corner, so 10 around the outside, and then there's 10 around the inside as well. So the way I'm doing that is just scraping the coating of this wire off with a file, um, tinning the piece with solder, and then soldering the links. So. Get some solder to take to the corners. And then cutting a piece of this silver wire um, and soldering that all the way around. So I'll continue to do that.
So I finally got all my wire links done on the inner and outer, all 20 of them. Uh, this of course fits quite nicely onto here. Uh, but obviously I need this outer, link to, uh, outer ring to light up, so I left these two wires if you remember at the beginning. That one with the kinking is the positive and that one is the negative. So what I need to do is attach those to the two uh, rings that I left with the LED leads. So we just need to solder those on and then we should be complete. So here it is all together. The uh, LED I put in the base is rather more yellow than the ones in the rings, but I quite like the look of it. I will be putting some high quality pictures on the website. You can find the link in the description to this video. And at some point I will make the STL files available for download if you'd like to download one and print it yourself.